Why were you in Washington, D.C. on October 15th? You had a doctor's appointment and then you called your friend Shelly. Why did you do that? You Googled Black Lives Matter. What were you hoping to find? Why did you clear your browser history? And why am I asking you these intrusive questions? And why is my office lit up in this very dramatic way? I'm Jamil Jaffer, and I'd like to talk to you about privacy and free speech in the digital age. For 14 years, I litigated these kinds of cases at the ACLU. I represented The Nation, Human Rights Watch, and many journalists and writers. Now I run something called the Knight First Amendment Institute. We defend the freedom of speech and the freedom of the press. You know those user agreements that you click on all the time online without even reading? What they're supposed to do is tell you what information is being collected about you and what's being done with it. The truth is that most of those agreements are awful. The government hasn't given us one at all. And the result is that we don't know what information is being collected about us and we certainly don't know how it's being used. Until Snowden, we didn't have a good sense of what was being swept up into the government's databases. And when we brought these cases, the courts refused to engage. They said there wasn't proof that the surveillance was going on. Now we know a lot more. And I have to say, it's pretty chilling. The government alone is collecting massive amounts of cell phone location data. That's information that can tell them where a person was, how long she was there, who she was with. It's collecting the contents of international phone calls and email, address books, contact lists. Until very recently, it was collecting metadata about every single phone call you made, when you made the call, who you spoke to, and for how long. So remember those user agreements? Well, Pokemon Go should tell you what it does with your information. And so should the government. What does it mean when a kid wants to search, am I transgender, and he doesn't do it because he's worried about who might find out? What does it mean when a journalist hesitates before researching a controversial story? Maybe each one of these hesitations is innocuous on its own, but what do they mean together? What if all of us start worrying that we're going to be judged for every single text and phone call and Google search? It's a pretty fundamental change in the way that we relate to the world. This grim future that I'm sketching it's not inevitable, but think about what you want the world to look like five years from now. My guess is that you want a world in which the right to privacy and the freedoms of speech and the press still have meaning. That's certainly what I want. <laughs>